Maxuba Judge. Now today is Friday. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, we bless you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for a wonderful week. Thank you for bringing us your truth, stirring our minds to believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I declare today, burdens are lifted, yokes destroyed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Man, praise God. Now remember, let's call for our daily bread. Now, why are we calling for our daily bread? Not because we are trying God, not because we are testing Him. No, because Jesus commanded us to do it. So we're not do God, give me daily bread to prove that you are God. God, God has a lot of patience. He's not going to respond to that. Praise God. So, so let's call for our daily bread just because Jesus said it. They give us this day our daily bread. It is a give us our prayer. They give us this day. Meaning that prayer should be prayed on a daily basis. So join me right now as we as we release our faith in Jesus and make this declaration. Say, Father, today I receive from you my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Right. First, no, no, no. For James chapter 1. Praise God. James chapter 1. And verse, let me just take the whole text again. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation. Now you see why he's telling you count it a joyful thing. Why? Because he's teaching you what you should do. Because whenever your faith is tried, it's for a promotion. You see? So when you pass that trial, get ready for a new level. And the truth about this, this is spiritual work now. The moment you go into a new level, the former level you are becomes normal. Now that's why you must be careful to see the leading of the Spirit of God in your life. And understand that's why I'm taking time to teach you what I'm teaching you. So, you allowing patience. Now he says, count it a joyful thing. Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. And then he says, but let patience have a perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. So, it is you that will not be impatient with your faith. It is you. And how do you know your patient? When you begin to realize that the reason I have faith is because God gave me faith. Not because of anything. You know, sometimes, look, I, I need that job. I really need that job. This job have to come true. Why do you really need that job? Eh, you know, so that people will know that I'm serving a living God. <laughs> God is living, whether they know it or they don't know it. Now, that's getting impatient. It's getting impatient. Understand your reason for expecting what you're expecting. Understand your reason for doing what you are doing. Now, look at a man like Abraham. He was tested many times. You remember when, when, when the herdsmen of Lot and his herdsmen began to, you know, um, strive concerning grazing land. So you see, this Fulani headsman crisis didn't start today. It started right then, even in the days of Abraham, praise God. The headsman of Lot and the headsman of Abraham, they were striving. And Abraham looked at this situation. Now remember, God have already spoken to him that he will give him every land that he, see, that he sees. God had spoken to him. So now, there's a strife going on. 
And then that thought comes to his mind. And that's the devil. Trust, he will always show up. He always looks for an opportunity to show up. So he shows up. If God have really given you this land, tell Lord to pack and get out. Mm -hmm. He wants to come and drag your inheritance with you. And Abraham thought about it. He said, I know what. Hey, Lord. Yes, uncle, come here. You know what? Let there be no strife between me and you and between my men and your men. See what we're going to do. Now, this is Abraham, uncle Abraham, talking to nephew Lot, not brothers, uncle and nephew. And Abraham said, the land is before you. You can go anywhere. If you choose right, I will go left. If you choose left, I will go right. And what was going on there? Patience. Abraham's faith in what God said to him concerning that land was being tried. You see, <laughs> let me just finish this up. I'll share David's own story with you. And Abraham told Lord, look, the land is before you. Choose anywhere you go. Abraham, you're giving out your inheritance that God gave to you. God gave to me in his own choice. I won't struggle to keep it. So how do you get it back? If God has given it to me, then it's really mine. Nobody can take it away from me. What's that patience was being found in Abraham? And Lot made the choice. I said, is that what you really want? Say, yes, sir. And guess what? It was the physically good part Lot chose. Now, a Nigerian uncle would knock his head and say, foolish boy. I was only testing you. Give him two proverbs and knock his head again. Say, you, where have you seen that you choose before your uncle? You choose before an elder. Don't you know you allow the elder? I, I was just testing your heart. You see yourself? But when Lot made his choice, Abraham said, you can go. You can have it. And the Bible says, immediately Lot left. God showed up and said, Abraham, yes, sir. Stand up. Now look as far as your eyes can see. I've given it to you. God came to reinforce that word. Why? Because Abraham's faith was tried and patience was found with Abraham. Praise God. God said, nah, nah, nah. This is my man. Praise God. Now the same thing happened with David. I, I know sometimes we miss this point and we just see David, the giant slayer, and David that became king. But we miss this, this very detail that will really bless you. Now, here is David doing his own thing, taking care of his father's sheep. And this old prophet came to the house one day and they, they sent for him and said, David, yes, daddy is calling you. Um, okay, let me know. Nah, nah, David, David, you have to come now. Ah, what's the matter? Why is this so urgent? David, just, just follow me. Let's go now. What's going on? Now? There's a prophet. Have you heard of Prophet Samuel? Yeah, that prophet. Yes, you know him. He's in the house. He said he will not sit down until you get to the house. Ah, what's going on? Have I done something wrong? You better follow me. And then David followed and got home. And Samuel said, kneel down and poured oil on him and began to make those pronouncements. And part of it was God have chosen you to be king over his people in the place of Saul. Okay. You don't even know whether to say thank you or, or, or amen to that kind of a prophecy. And then he goes back, taking care of his father's sheep. And one day someone came to him and said, David, yeah, what are you doing tomorrow? Um, nothing, apart from taking care of the sheep. You are needed in the palace. Pa what? Palace. <laughs> Which palace? The king of Israel. Is looking for you. Me. Now, where do you think David's mind will go to first? The prophecy. What that prophecy? Has it has the time come? Is Saul going to call me to the palace and hand over to me? How? Why is he calling me to the palace? And then David got into the palace. And he met to say, Hey, how are you? Young man, you look so handsome. Thank you, sir. I heard you can play the harp very well. Oh, okay. How? Yeah, yes, I can. 
Um, can you play for me? Let me let me hear it. Okay, sir. Uh, he began to play and play. Whoa, wow. Hey, come here. Whose son are you? I'm the son of Jesse. Oh, okay. Um, call your daddy for me. Oh, don't worry, don't worry. Don't call him. I'll send a message to him. And then Saul sent a message to Jesse. I said, Jesse, your son is now my son. I'm detaining him in the palace. He's, a, he's an official to the king right now. He's a PA for music affairs to the king right now. So he will only see you when he's ha he has break time to come and see you. Really? Now, what do you think David will remember? The prophecy? So wait. God said I'll be king. And now I'm being introduced to the palace. Whoa. And then he began to walk in the palace. From that day, he began to walk in the palace. Then one day, of course, he still goes home to do his father's thing. So one day, the Goliath challenge came and he defeated Goliath. Now, that also was another anointing. Like, whoa, this looked like what the prophet said, that God would begin to exalt and magnify me. And everybody began to praise David and began to sing. And then, you know what, the women began to sing. And suddenly, Paul turned, Saul turned against David. And at some point, David had to run for his life. Now listen, at that point, don't you think the temptation would have come? I thought God said you'd be king and he has brought you to the palace. Why are you running for your life? Stay here and fight for what is yours. Nah. If God said I'll be king... He only has the ability to make me king, not myself. But for now, I've got to escape from my life. Now, many have died trying to fight a battle that was never given to them. I'm talking about God's children. God said you'll be made something. And now in the physical, instead of them making you that thing, they made someone else that thing. Said, no way, no way. I must fight for what is mine, what is rightfully mine. God told me that he has given me that. Oh, this, is, this is corruption. This is corruption. And then you begin to fight physical battle. And then they say the next thing, see that man is a wicked man. Oh, don't fight with him. Oh. How many of God's children have died because of land issues? And guess what they were quoting? God told me that that land is my own. Now guess what? Patience came. Your faith was tried. Tried. And patience was not found. What is patience? David looked at it and said, Nah, if God says I'll be king, he himself will make me king. He had run away. He ran for his life. And then you remember the story two times. Now David was living in caves instead of at least his father's house. He was living in caves. And guess what? Twice Saul ran into the very cave where David and his men were staying and slept off in that place. The first time one of David's men went to Saul and all his men were sleeping. He said, David, the word of the Lord. Remember what God said to you, that you'll be king. You know this man, he's not ruling us well. So imagine you are the one carrying the anointing of God's spirit. And... That you know that the Spirit of God has departed from him. Not only that, he now rules by an evil spirit. And he's making laws and rules that will affect your life. Imagine being in that kind of a situation. And now you're giving the opportunity to see the man. This man is after your life. You just strike this pair, he's dead. The whole nation problem is solved. Your own problem is solved. And your own word, the word of God concerning you will be fulfilled. You will become king. And David shook his head. That was the greatest temptation David faced. But he shook his head and said, Nah, I will not use my own hand against the God's anointed. God's anointed? David, didn't you know that the Spirit of God has departed from him? But David knew what he was talking about. His faith was being tried at that moment. And he was found to be loaded with patience. Just like, you know, you, you are in a country and then you see that, you, you know, you just put yourself in, in some people's shoes sometimes. You are a smart deputy and then your principal is, you don't even know what's going on. 
and then you're, you're, you love God, you're a believer, and then you, you see things going bad. You try to speak sometimes, nobody listens to you. In fact, because you have spoken, they even come against you. Keep quiet. And they still do the things they need to do. Sometimes you are tempted to say, come, what nonsense is this? Let me just throw in the towel. No, allow patience to have her perfect work. Now that's why even as a nation, we need to be patient. Until God, let me tell you this, God knows, that's why we don't speak against the government. We don't dare speak against the government. Why? That time you are tempted to speak, your faith is being tried. Shh. Allow patience to have her perfect work. I know God has a great plan for our nation. I know. I know. And, and he's going to fulfill that plan that he has for our nation. In the fullness of time. And then guess what? It shall be before our eyes. But in the meantime, rejoice whenever your faith is being tried. You know why? Because patience will be found in you. Praise God. I've got to stop here. Listen, I pray that your life will be loaded with patience. And by patience, God will begin to promote you to different levels. And at every level where you are tried, patience will be found constant in you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I bless this weekend for you. I declare in the name of the Lord Jesus, everything that is lacking in your life, this weekend, a miracle will come that will supply all that need. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. God bless you. I'll see you on Monday. Bye.